Right, well, I said we're going to be learning to do carpentry. I think we're taking it quite seriously. Uh, and I'd like to welcome you to the new Chateau Carpentry Workshop. Well, what happened was the other day I went to the, um, the builders merchants and I was looking for some oak boards so that I could make a new door for the kitchen. Uh, and I had a look and the quality of the oak that they were selling was terrible. It was full of knots, it had splits in it. There was bits of sapwood down the sides and they were charging 40 euros for a 20 centimeter wide board that was two meters long. And that is just ridiculous. We had a look online and, and I found um, a local sawmill that does only oak and it's, it's literally 10 minutes drive from here and it's called the Siri Noel, which means the Christmas sawmill. Um, so we went, but they don't do pre-prepared, pre-planed boards. All they sell is seasoned slices of tree. So I bought this wood and then I realized that I needed a planer. So, here's the planer. There it is. And it has to have this big vacuum unit that takes away all the sawdust and the shavings. So we've got that, we've got this, we've got these boards now. So all we have to do is cut them to the right width, cut off the sapwood, and pass them through the planer and, until we get them to the right thickness. And if you follow me, I'll show you. This is the timber that we've already done. Let me move this. These are the boards that we're going to make up the door, the door that's going to go towards where the, the bathroom's going to be. So we've got three boards there, which is for the door. I know in the UK, if, you want, if you're a carpenter, you go to a timber merchant and you buy boards that are already thickness, they're already planed, they're already, everything's done. But they don't do that in France. In France, if you're a carpenter, you have to go to a mill and you have to buy slices of tree and you have to do it yourself. So I'm doing it myself. I bought a whole tree trunk sliced into eight slices and it's grade A and it's seasoned and then kiln dried. Um, and I bought enough to do, to make a door, to make the rest of the architrave um, and to do all of the skirting boards for the kitchen. So that's one we've just planed. You, can, you can't really see it from there, that's it. So that's, that's 3.3 meters long. That's really long. So it's gonna take three slices of tree to make enough skirting board for the kitchen. Hopefully if I can learn how to do everything properly, I'm gonna just buy timber and make everything myself. Um, properly, from scratch, from, from tree to furniture, all in one place. So there we go. Okay, so now we're on the subject of carpentry. I'd love to show you something really interesting. It's something that we're very, very fortunate to have because it didn't come with the chateau. We were actually contacted about four years ago by a man. Now, I think this man's grandfather, or maybe I think it may have been his great-grandfather, owned a, a carpenter's workshop. His great-grandfather was actually commissioned to do all of the carpentry for the west wing of the chateau. If you look at the front of the chateau, that's the right-hand tower. Now his company did all of the carpentry work and in their archives, the um, great-grandson actually had all of the plans, all of the hand-drawn carpenter's plans for that tower. And they are just behind me and I'm gonna show you them now. But something very interesting happened on the same day. Another man came uh, and his great-grandfather, I believe, had actually worked with this man um, as a carpenter 
but he was also uh, an amateur photographer. So he um, had taken a picture of the chateau whilst it was under reconstruction. So let's have a look at the plans and then we'll talk about the photo after. So if you come and have a look here, in this very large folder are all the original plans. Probably the most interesting document, I would say, is this. Now this is, well, there's quite a lot here. Um, there's letters and there's also documents. I'm not sure what this is. This is a ledger. This may contain, yeah. So this is all the notes, all the measurements, all the prices of everything that was done. This is dated to 1904. So the Chateau reconstruction was started about 1900, 1899, I believe. That was when Monsieur Vernville, who owned the Chateau, he decided that he wanted the Chateau bigger and grander with nicer stone and nicer interiors. And if you have a look here, this is Monsieur de Vernville, a restoration du Chateau de la Bamenier. Travaux de Menuiserie. So this is the, the list of prices for the carpentry work. And it's dated 1904. And it has, look, here we go, parquet. So this is for the flooring. So it's a very, very interesting document to have. Uh, and it actually lists every single price for every single piece of wood that was put into the west wing of the chateau. It's not often that you know, an old building like this, you would actually still have all of this paperwork. Now we do actually know that um, another person, one of the previous owners is in possession of the full architect's plans for the actual structure of the building. Uh, and they have promised that they will give them to us, but we need to contact them so that we can get them back. Um, they said that they would give them back. Um, so we have all of the, the architect's plans for the woodwork, but not the actual building itself. Uh, oh, Pavillon Rest Grenier. So this is for the attic of the West Wing, the West Wing attics. Sapin sur sol niveau. I think it's uh, Joyce. This is for the actual roof structure of the tower on the West Wing. Wow. All the measurements, all the sizes, all the price, the price of every single piece of wood, it's all there. So something else that was really amazing, um, when the guy came to give us all of these documents, he actually invited us to the original workshop where all the carpentry um, was done. It still exists. It's in Laval, which is about 30 minutes drive from here. Uh, obviously, they can't use all of these old belt-driven um, cast iron machines anymore because they don't comply to modern health and safety regulations. Apparently, some of these machines could kill you. Um, so. The workshop does exist, all the machines are still in it, all of the tools, um, but it's now pretty much just locked up. Um, it's not open to the public, um, but we were invited to have a look round. Now this is the days before YouTube, so I didn't actually film any of it, like I, I would now, um, but I did take some really interesting photos, um, but it was absolutely amazing to see the original machines um, that were used to, to make all of the carpentry in the, in the dining room, that whole tower, all the bedrooms, everything, it's all still there. So when the great-grandson of the original carpenter that did all of the work um, on that tower came here, um, he actually came with a friend. Now this friend also was the great-grandson of a gentleman that had worked on the chateau as a carpenter. It wasn't his firm, but he worked on the chateau uh, and his great-grandfather was a bit of an amateur photographer back in 1905. And he had actually photographed the reconstruction in, in act, like as it was happening. Because what they actually did is, they, the original chateau, the core of the original chateau was here. So what they did is instead of just completely flattening in the chateau, demolishing it and rebuilding from a pile of rubble from basically from the ground up, what they did is so that they could still live here at the same time, they knocked down the left-hand side of the chateau and rebuilt the new tower attached to the original chateau. And then they did the same on the west wing. They demolished that half of the chateau and rebuilt that. Uh, and with the two brand new towers in the center was still the original chateau. And then they, then they knocked down the, the right hand half of the center of the chateau and rebuilt that. And all that was left was the entrance hall and the, um, the eastern drawing room, which would just, just be next to us here. At that point, uh, a gentleman took a photo so this isn't the original photo, but this is a print representing, this was the exact size of the print, and you can see how faded it is. That is exactly as it was when he gave it to me. Uh, and actually, you can't tell 
but the actual original was all ripped and, and wrinkled and, and cracked. So I asked him uh, if I could borrow this photo for just for five minutes and he agreed. So what I did is I took the photo, I ran up to my bedroom, turned on my computer and my scanner and I scanned it as high a resolution as I could at the time. Since then, I have been able to, it's taken me a long time, I have actually taken this photo uh, and res digitally restored it to this. Um, wow. And it was quite difficult. The only way I could actually do it was what I did is I had this photo and I went outside and I lined up exactly where the original photographer would have been. And I took a high resolution photograph um, from the exact same spot and I was able to merge the two photos together so that you could get the edges uh, and the bits of trees and stuff. And then, so those are the parts of the photo that were missing. Uh, so I used, used a new photo to put those back and then enhanced the original part to do this. And, and this, is, this was the result. So we went from this to this. These are actually available on the website, doingitourselves.com to buy. They come like that, but also with each photo I'm going to scan this now and then a copy of this will come with every photo so you have that and you have the original document and that's just sort of you know something that's absolutely for me extremely special to have it's part of the history of the building um, and you can see the restoration not just the documents you can actually see it in action the restoration as you can see here this is the the new towers they're rebuilding what is now the library and this little section here is all that's left of the original chateau. Yeah, if anyone would like to buy this, it's available on the website, doingitourselves.com, under the section photographic prints. And with that, as I said, will come a scan of the document. And um, yeah, that's a real piece of this chateau's history. Just almost 120 years later, the chateau now needs to be restored again. So any money from these prints will go towards keeping this place alive for another 100 years. So there you go.